and the way you can tell this really isn't free energy is that the lows get lower and the highs get lower for both batteries. So they'll eventually keep dropping down and it really doesn't help with these uh, voltmeters because they, they sap up some energy as well as the, the voltmeter display that's on the step up boost converter. Now the one thing I, I found out by uh, actually reading the patent of Carlos Benitez is that the battery switching was ancillary. It's, it wasn't the cause of the free energy that he discovered. What he found was that, or what he did was created a spark gap that was quenched by an electromagnet created by the spark gap current. So I don't know if it, that, that was uh, easy to follow, but imagine that you have a spark gap and the current that was that that created you out also create an electromagnet with that and that passes across that spark gap and it causes that spark gap to flicker it turns it off and it creates this really fast oscillation that you can collect in a capacitor the battery switching just allowed you to capture that energy and put that into the charging battery the way he had it in his patent. So the, the battery switching itself, Carlos Benitez never said that this in and of itself was free energy. So let's uh, get that off the table. I, and I, it was my misunderstanding, maybe I misunderstood Rick Friedrich, uh, but um, yeah, that's not what the patent says and that's not what I've been seeing. Although it's kind of cool to see one battery charging while the motor is running, or actually two batteries charging. This is a 12.67. Again, it's not moving that fast compared to the other ones. So let's switch again. I'm gonna press the, uh, switch the, pri uh, the primary charge battery and we'll watch it firsthand. There we go. So one of them, the other one is discharging and the other is charging. And we're still about half a volt. Uh, I'm sorry, half an amp running at almost 24 volts. So there you have it. Battery switching what battery switching means, what Carlos Benitez actually intended, and a circuit if you want to try to replicate this experiment. Well, not a circuit, but a schematic if you want to try to replicate this experiment. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that batteries will go back to their resting voltage. There's, there's a few states. There's a charging voltage, there's a discharging voltage, there's a recovery voltage, and there's a resting voltage. And the resting voltage is, is really what the charge of the battery um, is at rest, and it may not actually be what's available for you to use. So there's a lot of trickery in, in watching this stuff, but uh, the one thing I found out from looking at the uh, at the actual Carlos Benitez patent, which is right here, is that I need a spark gap in order to be able to fully understand what his uh, experiment was trying to, or what his patent was really describing. And then he has some calculations about, you know, regarding the frequency and of the oscillations. And even on this patent, someone added another uh, diagram. But in this diagram, they have a spark gap right here, but they don't have the quenching of the spark gap 
indicated. So even this isn't complete. And I think this was added, uh, yeah, added to the patent to this patent document. All right. If you have any questions, comments, uh, post them in the comment section. Uh, please subscribe and like the video. Visit us at facebook.com slash perpetual motor. All right. Thanks for watching.